In this part, we'll examine the components and operation of two specialized types of relief valves that may either function as safety valves or assist safety valves in protecting pressurized systems. The two types are safety relief valves and pilot actuated relief valves. We'll begin with safety relief valves. While safety valves typically discharge gases or vapors, safety relief valves discharge gas, vapor, steam, or liquid to prevent a predetermined safe pressure from being exceeded. Safety relief valves are commonly used in refineries, on systems that contain liquid vapor mixtures, and in some low-pressure steam systems. Some types of safety relief valves are suitable for use as either a safety valve or a relief valve, depending on the application. For instance, certain safety relief valves can be used as safety valves on air systems and as relief valves on liquid systems. This is a cutaway illustration of one type of safety relief valve that's specifically designed for use in gas or steam systems. It has a long nozzle-shaped inlet, a disc and seat, a reaction hood for directing the flow of fluid through the valve, and a single adjusting ring for changing blowdown. The pressure of fluid directed against the disc lifts the disc off the seat. While the valve briefly simmers, the flow of the fluid as it discharges outside the valve's seating area increases the lifting force. Then, the reaction hood deflects the discharging fluid downward. Creating a reactive force by deflecting the flow of the fluid further increases the lifting force and causes the valve to pop open. As system pressure returns to normal, the valve closes. This is a pilot-actuated relief valve. It may also be referred to by any of these other names. Pilot actuated relief valves operate much like safety valves. That is, they pop open rather than open gradually. And they have a predetermined amount of blowdown to prevent chattering. However, a pilot actuated relief valve also has a separate pilot device that senses excess pressure conditions and causes the valve to open. This arrangement allows excess pressure to be detected in one part of a system, such as a steam line, while the valve protects another part of the system, such as the boiler. Pilot actuated relief valves are often used on gas and steam systems that also use safety valves. In such cases, the pilot actuated relief valves are set to open at lower system pressures than the safety valves are. This arrangement saves wear and tear on the safety valves and prevents costly shutdowns that would be required for safety valve repairs. You see, by law, safety valves can't be isolated from the systems that they protect because of the damage that could occur if the systems were operated without protection. So whenever a safety valve is damaged, its system must be shut down while repairs are made. Pilot actuated relief valves, however, can be isolated from a system because they're not a primary part of the system safeguards. So the pilot actuated relief valves can be used and then repaired if necessary without having to shut down the system. The disc opens downward, allowing the steam to escape through the outlet at the upper part of the valve body. Also, in this example, the spring is placed below the disc. The valve also has a disc guide, which is a sleeve that aligns the disc with the seat. A small opening between the disc guide and the disc allows system fluid to pass through from the inlet to the bottom of the main disc. Consequently, system pressure is exerted on both the top and the bottom of the disc during normal system operation. Spring tension is also exerted on the bottom of the disc. If system pressure increases, it increases on both sides of the disc, but the valve won't open because the pressure on the top of the disc counterbalances the pressure on the bottom, and spring tension holds the valve closed. 
The pilot device initiates the valve's opening. The device is set to open at a predetermined pressure. A pressure sensing tube in the pilot device detects increases in system pressure. And when system pressure reaches the predetermined level, the pressure sensing tube activates an electrical relay. The electrical relay closes an electrical circuit and energizes a solenoid. The solenoid then lifts a pilot valve and the excess pressure is relieved. The excess pressure that's relieved by the pilot valve comes from below the disc in the main valve. The amount of pressure that the pilot valve is capable of relieving is greater than the amount that could leak between the disc and the disc guide. When this pressure is relieved, the only pressure that remains on the disc is the pressure that's above it. With no counterbalancing pressure below the disc, the pressure above the disc easily overcomes the spring tension, so the valve opens to release system fluid through the outlet above the disc. When system pressure returns to normal, the pilot valve closes. Pressure then builds up again below the main valve disc and helps the spring hold the disc closed. External inspections of safety valves are conducted when a problem is suspected and also when routine preventive maintenance or testing is scheduled. In this part, we'll see a typical external inspection and we'll look at hand lifting a valve when the external inspection indicates that certain problems may be present. In preparation for an external inspection, check the operating history of the valve. This will give you an idea of specific problems that you should watch out for during the inspection. Next, proceed with a step-by-step -step external examination of the different parts of the valve. For this two-ring huddling chamber safety valve, first check the lock wire on the adjusting ring pins. The lock wire is fastened in place with a metal clip as the final step in the valve reassembly procedure. So the presence of the metal clip is a sign that the adjusting rings should still be properly set for operation. If the metal clip is missing, or if the lock wire has been tampered with, the valve set points may not be correct. Then you must have the valve taken to the shop to check the adjusting ring positions, and if necessary, reset them. Check for signs of leakage or leak through at the discharge piping bolts and possibly around the yoke or bonnet bolts. Some valves have a yoke and a bonnet that are two connected pieces. Others, like this one, have a single piece that may be called either a yoke or a bonnet. For consistency, we'll use the term yoke. Also inspect the top or cap of the valve. Next, look for steam or warm condensate leakage around the drain plug and around the bolts on the yoke. Check the temperatures of the valve and the discharge piping. Another way to detect leakage is to check the exhaust pipe from the valve. When you make this check, be very careful not to place any part of your body over the exhaust path from the valve. If the valve were to lift unexpectedly, you could be severely injured. If steam is being discharged from the exhaust pipe, the valve is definitely leaking. An external inspection may reveal that a valve is leaking between the disc and the seat. This could occur if the valve didn't reseat correctly after the last time that it popped. Or it could be caused by foreign matter, such as ash, dirt, or rust particles trapped between the seat and the disc. In many cases, you can correct either of these two causes of leakage by manually lifting or hand lifting the valve. Hand lifting clears foreign matter out of the valve and gives the disc a chance to reseat properly. But any time a safety valve is lifted, there's a corresponding drop in system pressure. So before you hand lift a valve, notify the appropriate operating personnel so that they can compensate for the drop in system pressure and keep it from interfering with normal operations. If operating personnel aren't forewarned, when pressure drops as you hand lift the valve, they might take emergency measures to raise pressure or to shut down the system. 
such actions could be costly and perhaps dangerous. Likewise, before hand lifting a valve, you must take appropriate personal safety precautions. Attaching a hook to the valve's release lever enables you to position yourself as far away from the valve as possible. This is important because when you hand lift the valve, a great deal of hot pressurized fluid could be released. To lift the valve, pull the hook hard enough to open the valve all the way. You should hold the valve open for only two or three seconds. If you hold it open any longer, the disc could be damaged by the rush of steam. After the valve closes, repeat the inspection procedure to check for leaks and more heat than would normally be expected after hand lifting. If the valve seats properly after lifting, it should start to cool down immediately. If the second inspection indicates that the problem wasn't solved by hand lifting the valve, or if hand lifting wasn't a possible solution for the initial problem, you'll need to follow your plant procedures to have the valve examined and the problem corrected. If an external inspection of a safety valve reveals problems, you'll usually need to disassemble the valve and inspect its internal components. You'll need to follow your facility's procedures and the manufacturer's instructions for the exact steps to disassemble the specific valve that you're working on. But there are some general procedures that apply to most types of safety valves. We'll look at typical procedures for the disassembly and inspection of a two-ring huddling chamber safety valve that has been removed from service and taken to a shop for repairs.